music, sounds, rhythms. To understand that music is comprised of sound and rhythms doesn't mean you know music. Understanding music requires an understanding of the, the science behind sound creation merged with the magic of spirituality, which gives the sound flight or, or life. Now, it's not necessary to know or even understand how science and spirituality are merged in order to hear an energy. Or feel that energy move through us. But if you can embrace the flow without reservation, then suddenly all the science and spirituality involved fade away. And that which seemed impossible becomes natural. Music. Music is a wonderful example of how the blending of science and spirituality result in an outcome that defies words. I mean, how can a piece of music be defined by words? The words can never do the music justice. Music does not live in the past, nor does it live in any future life. Music only becomes alive in this moment, the very moment we experience it. Now, music serves as an example of our magical world. And that, for that reason, I like it. There have been many scientists in their quest to reverse engineer this world that have split the magical spirit out of the equation. For example, Sir Isaac Newton in the early 1700s intensely evolved the perceived reality by separating the world into two containers. One was the world of spirit, and the other, well, that was the mechanical world of understanding. By removing the soul from the equation, Newton created what appeared to him to be a stable mechanical world. The Newtonian era effectively redefined our perception. I believe science and spirituality have both suffered a very real inherent sense of separation because of this. Now, I know that consciousness is the key to deep scientific understanding, and I have found through the many years of teaching that the world has a resistance to the merging of science and spirituality. Uh, a real resistance to the, the music of oneness. 
Most people cling to what they know, the mechanical, explainable world without phenomena, and many fear that which they cannot see or touch. And face it, tachyon, believe me, it's hard to see. This is all a byproduct of the Newtonian era. It's no one's fault. What we experience today is our prejudice of yesterday. And it takes a mass consciousness shift to change the world's perceived reality. Reality really is subjective. I mean, think about it. Once upon a time, it was believed by the masses that the world was flat. Um, the sun revolved around the earth. The moon was made of cheese. Only birds flew. And our cell phones and EMFs, well, it was believed they were safe. <sighs> Clearly, everything evolves. And if we can change the mass consciousness, then the perceived reality will also change. And it's worth doing. I stand here today proud to be part of evolution's move to reunite science and spirituality and to share the magic of that outcome. Now, as a scientist, I recognize that quantum physics offers the path to unification. It breeds a new kind of scientist, the frontier scientist. A scientist that looks beyond the barriers of the mechanical world and embraces unseen potentials. Tachyon is one such potential. The first description of tachyons came around the turn of the century from a Munich professor, Arnold Sommerfeld. Then, Dr. Henry Moray produced a 70 kilowatt generator out of a little box. Nobody understood. But I believe it was Nikola Tesla who stirred the imagination by conducting successful tests on an engine that powered a car with no visible energy source. Was Tesla the first to successfully harness faster than light tachyons? We don't know. But what we do know is that tachyons have become an integral part of the quantum and frontier scientists' perspective. The next big tachyon surge came in the early 60s when there were many scientists working on it like uh, uh, Shotaka from Japan and George Suttershan from India and Gerald Feinberg from the USA. And they began to really advance the theoretical frameworks for the study of tachyons. There was Dr. Nieper, Hans Nieper, another frontier scientist. He wrote, listen to this, he wrote, the field of physics which still operates out of the side of modern tachyon and gravitational field physics within the orthodox categories of knowledge and which do not want to relinquish them, well, they will undergo severe shock in the coming tachyon era. That's a direct quote. Almost perfect, I think. Anyway, the tachyon era is here. But it isn't an era of free energy or faster than light travel like some expected it to be. It is an era of evolving consciousness and radiant health. Science and spirituality have merged. Dr. Nieper predicted it. He predicted a tachyon health revolution. For me, personally, it started in 1990 when I perfected a process that restructured natural materials at the submolecular level, creating a permanent and stable tachyon antenna. Well, by the end of 1993, through the efforts of many global scientists and researchers studying tachyonized materials, a breakthrough in measuring the effects was realized. The results? Well, the results became the backbone of the theories outlined in Tachyon Energy, A New Paradigm in Holistic Healing. Now, that was written by myself alongside Dr. Gabriel Cousins. 
Our theories support the special relativity and modern quantum theories, which claim that tachyons differ from slower than light particles in many important ways. One, tachyon can only exist beyond light speed. Two, tachyons are pure potential. Three, tachyons are not affected by gravity. Four, tachyons, unlike the zero point field, have form. Even the energetic continuum theorem helps us understand that tachyons have no frequency but rather are the source of all frequencies. And because tachyons have form, they do interact with our slower than light formed world. This is something Ernst Walls, Dr. Walls, mathematically proved in The Physics of Tachyon, published in 1995. Dr. Walls not only mathematically established that tachyons exist, but he also calculated that everything on its way to becoming uses tachyon as the evolutionary catalyst. Tachyons, according to Hans Nieper, represent a revolution in medicine. That's where we are today. And it is believed that a clear key to radiant health is an abundant source of tachyons. In 2008, several US patents proving the effects of tachyonized materials were applied for. And still, some people are afraid. Well, today, ATTI is at the center of this tachyon era. Through tachyonization, we harness the tachyon's potential to help resolve health challenges, help resolve EMF issues, cell phone radiation, and so much more. I've developed many insightful introductory videos to help uncover the potential tachyon offers. And all of these videos are aimed at helping you find the magic that is life. We are truly the form of the formless, and, and tachyon is our direct link with this formless potential of all that is. To understand tachyon is to step into a unified spiritual scientific perspective, merging into that which supports our oneness and consciousness evolution. Don't worry if this seems a little bit difficult to grasp. It's okay. It's okay. Just begin experiencing tachyonized materials effects on your health, on your life, in reducing stress, in eliminating EMF hazards. Start protecting yourself from cell phone radiation and begin enhancing your meditation, your prayer, your sanity. And someday, you will experience the magic of all that is.